<coughs> All right, guys. Hopefully, you should be able to hear us. Um, about All right, cool. So yeah, hopefully you guys can hear me okay, um, and we will just basically be able to kind of crack on and, and, and get stuck straight into the meat of it. What I'll do, I'll just, uh, I'll just leave it a couple of minutes just while we wait for a couple of other people to come in, because I'm sure there will be some others, because I just saw them um, hiding out somewhere just now. Um, so look, if you can hear me, just do us a favour, guys. Just in the, you should have a chat box just on your right hand side there. If you just just pipe up in there, just let me know you can hear me, okay? Um, and then we can, uh, yeah, I'll know that you guys are all good to go. So I said, just pipe up in that chat box, and then we will be ready to roll. Alright, cool. I'm not heard from any of you, so I'm assuming at the minute you maybe can't hear me. <laughs> ah, there we go. Cool, we got one. Magic. That's great. Cool, smashing. <coughs> Alright, cool. So I said, look, I'll get the, I'll get the, so the, uh, I'll get the slides up, um, and then we will. As I said, we'll just get straight on into it. Alright, we'll probably give it like another minute or so, just while a few other people are entering the room, so to speak, um, and then it will be game on. Alright. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, you got to excuse me being a bit of a techno tar tonight. It's a it's a, it's a different software to to the webinars which we've done before. Um, it should end up better, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, and you can kind of let me know at the end of it if it was awful. But look, um, tonight's meant to be about an hour. Um, if I can do it a bit shorter, then I'll do it a bit shorter. But we're, we're going to see how we're getting on because I've got quite a lot to go through. Uh, to get through, sorry, I, I was actually going through the. Um, going through the slides earlier on and it might well end up taking a bit longer than anticipated in which case if it's gonna go much beyond about 45 minutes or so guys what I'll do well I'll just kind of end it at a like an appropriate time and then we'll just uh, you know we'll we'll chuck the other stuff in the next seminar next week and, and hopefully that'll be uh, that should sort you out but uh, yeah you, you should get quite a bit out of today's today's event anyway so look let's uh, let's get on it so look <clears throat> this is what we're going to go through today, Kate. Going to we're going to talk about why we store fat around your belly uh, and what to do about it. This bugger will use me telling you why it's there. If I don't tell you what you need to do about it, uh, we're going to have a look at why we store fat around your love handles and again what to do about it. I'm going to give you eight ways or was <laughs> eight ways to kill carb cravings. I'm going to talk to you about why fat is actually your fat loss friend. Macronutrients, okay, so how much carbs, fats, and proteins you need to be having if you are trying to lose weight. Okay, um, and I'm going to talk to you about why most training methods won't get you where you want to be, and also we'll chat about the most effective exercises and training methods to get you where you want to be. Okay, I'm hoping you guys should find this pretty interesting. Okay, all right. At the end, of course, as, as I said, we'll have a bit of a Q and A session as well. But I've just I've just popped up a few examples of just uh, kind of like before and after results that we you know we typically get. So there's one. Um, there's another a slightly younger lady. Uh, and another one of the girls, slightly kind of uh, bigger frame. That was through fitness camp. Another one of the ladies, this was on an online program we run. Uh, another one of the ladies through the fitness camp. This lady also from fitness camp. Uh, Ultimate Body Club, one of the girls there. Um, and that's it. I said I thought I'd just chuck a cut of in there. I'm not going to do a bit of a, an introduction about who I am and, and what I do and everything, because I'm hoping that if you've been reading my emails and stuff, you kind of got a bit of an idea about that. Uh, if you've got any questions about me, just ask. You just bang an email across, or, or um, ask someone who just worked with me or something. But uh, other than that, we're just going to get right into it. Okay. So look, why we store fat around the belly? Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's go into it right. Poor diet is simple. Um, it's, it's the biggest thing. If your diet's poor, excessive, and actually lacking in nutrients, you're gonna get fat. Okay. If you're eating more fuel than your fire can burn, you're gonna add on weight. Okay. Basically, if you're eating a bunch of excess calories than what your body can cope with and actually burn and deal with, you're gonna be you're gonna be adding weight. Okay. Um, I'm not a fan of calorie counting and stuff, but like you know, you. To, you know, it, it, it's clear if you're eating too many, then you're going to add on weight. Okay. Um, similar, if you're eating the wrong foods, then you're going to get fat and, and won't perform well. You know, if someone was eating a diet that consisted of 
2,000 calories of spinach and someone else who's eating a diet that consisted of 2,000 calories of Mars bar, um, the chance are the person who's having the Mars bar is actually going to end up getting weight. Okay, um, and look, a calorie is not a calorie, as we kind of almost gone into there. Um, <coughs> so, just a little scientist here, because I'm just going to go into just a little study which um, which was done. Uh, I can't even remember when it was done a little while ago now. Uh, basically, by a Harvard professor, uh, which kind of emphasised the fact that a calorie is not just a calorie. Okay, because um, you know we we need to focus on more on how food is actually going to react with our bodies and our hormones as opposed to just the caloric value of the foods okay now this guy could def uh, this Harvard professor basically uh, Dr. Ludwig um, he had three groups of overweight kids um, one group ate instant oatmeal for breakfast another ate steel cut oats and another group ate a vegetable omelet and some fruit all of those meals had the exact same number of calories. Okay, uh, they measured their blood um, before they ate, and then every half an hour for the next five hours after, um, they ate a lunch which is identical to the breakfast meal. So it's exactly the same calories, exactly the same foods. Um, after lunch, so after that second meal, they were told to eat whenever they were hungry for the rest of the afternoon. The people who had the instant oatmeal, which was the the, the highest sugar, okay, the fastest acting carb, they ate 81 percent more food in the afternoon than the guys who had the omelet. That's a hellish amount more food. <coughs> um, with the blood test, they had uh, reported high levels of insulin, higher levels of blood sugar, high levels of blood fats, and high levels of adrenaline as well. Okay. Um, again, despite eating the exact same number of calories at breakfast and lunch, the guys who ate the steel cut oats, they actually were 50, ate 51 percent more food in the afternoon compared to the omelet group. And the bottom line is your body reacts to food differently. Okay, 300 calories of spinach isn't going to be the same as 300 calories of Snickers, the same as 300 calories of a protein-rich, um, fibrous, uh, vegetable-loaded food is not going to be the same as 300 calories of um, instant oats with a bunch of sugar in there. Okay, so it's not all about calories okay next thing why we store fat around the belly liver health this is absolutely massive okay and so many people actually neglect this or well, maybe because they just don't know about it um, but it, it's one of those things that's so important uh, and, and as I said people just neglect it and don't get it right your liver is basically your body's very own detox organ okay if you've got a diet that's high in toxins okay so eating a bunch of processed food you know maybe too much sugars your liver's going to struggle to keep up with it okay it's not going to be able to process everything when that happens Happens, the the excess is actually going to get stored into your fat stores. Okay, your body's um, solution to pollution is dilution as well. Okay, so if you've got a load of toxins in your body, your body's going to throw that into your fat stores along with a bunch of water. Okay, so that's actually going to dilute it. Okay, that's why when you know when you do like a, uh, a nutrition program or diet, when you kind of detox, I guess you'll actually lose a pretty you know fair amount of weight. Uh, pretty pretty quickly. Uh, it's not all fat that you're going to lose straight away. You know, you're going to actually be losing these toxins and the water that surrounds them as well. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, nutritional stress, lifestyle stress, environmental stress. These things are actually going to elevate your cortisol levels. Okay. Your cortisol uh, cortisol is basically a stress hormone, which we're going to talk a little bit about in a minute. Um, Basically, as, as cortisol rises, so stress hormone, there's a protein in your liver that's HES1, actually elevates. Um, this actually turns off your liver's ability to break down fat, um, which are going to lead to a fatty liver and also abdominal fat, which sucks if you want to look lean and sexy. So look, here's cortisol, stress hormones, producing your adrenal glands, um, it's massively important for energy regulation and mobilization, so it's not the devil, okay, but too many people have got too much of this floating around the, the system like a lot of the time. Um, under stressful conditions, it's actually going to help to provide energy from protein, okay, interestingly enough. Um, Basically, when your when your body's stressed, it gets it gets fired up. Okay, it gets fired up to fight or run from the situation. Okay, um, and you know it, it, that, when that happens, cortisol, uh, norepinephrine, and epinephrine all get elevated. Okay, these three hormones. Okay, the norepinephrine. Okay, tells your body to stop producing insulin so you can have some fast-acting glucose ready. So you, so basically, so you can get some sugars ready. All right, so they get so you can get released in your system ready to go. Epinephrine actually relaxes your stomach muscles and intestines and decreases the blood flow to those organs. Okay, basically once the stressor passes, um, your cortisol tells your body to stop producing those hormones and actually go back to normal digestion. Um, now. 
your, your cortisol levels basically naturally fluctuate during the day. Okay, it's completely natural for cortisol to go up and go down. The big problem is in chronic stress. Okay, your that, that's basically going to cause your cortisol levels to just remain elevated. Okay, which isn't good. Which is and you basically got a bunch of um, cortisol receptors in and around your belly, um, which are going to kind of suck the fat into your fat cells around there, which really does sucks. Okay, um, oops, excuse me. Basically, one of the things cortisol does actually takes fat from healthier areas, okay? Um, and as I said, you've got a bunch of um, receptors around your belly, and it does actually lead to kind of increased storage around the belly. Um, another thing it does is actually turns peripheral fat. Okay, into unhealthy visceral fat. Visceral fat's the one that you really worry about. You can't really, like, it's not like you won't see it, but it's the stuff that's surrounding those organs in around the abdomen there, okay? Um, if that's high, you're going to increase your inflammation within your body and insulin resistance as well, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, okay? Um, if you've got this added belly, flat, belly fat, sorry, it's going to lead to increased cortisol, okay? So even higher stress hormone levels due to the higher levels of this enzyme, which actually converts inactive cortisone into to the active form of cortisol, which sucks. Okay, um, basically, the more belly fat you got, the more active cortisol converted by those enzymes. Cycle is going to continue. Your abs are going to remain hidden. Okay. Bottom line here: you do not want a bunch of stress hormone floating around your body um, at the wrong times. Okay. Um, <coughs> in terms of what to do about your belly fat, it's um, you know it's, it's it's relatively simple to be honest. Um, I mean, in terms of sorting, like you know, sorting out your stress hormone levels, you need to try and remove as much stress as you possibly can. I'm actually going to do a a webinar. I think it might end up being the third one in this series. We're going to do one on on kind of stress and the stress bucket or stress tub, whatever we're going to call it. Um, but for the purpose of today, just removing stress is going to help you out a lot. Now, stress could be nutritional stress in terms of your your eating crap. Okay, it could be something to do with your lifestyle in terms of you know it could be anything from from not getting enough sleep to having a boss that you hate to your kids running around like lunatics to your, 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 your husband doing your head in all the time I'm guilty of that frequently um, and it could be like environmental as well okay so you know in, in that we might even include stuff like you know getting pissed off in like a traffic jam you know but the more you, you got more you got stress for uh, getting thrown at you from all sorts of angles and your body deals with stress in the same way it has the same stress response to nutritional stress as it will to you know you you your boss yelling you at work like no? Okay, so what we do to, to kind of combat this is remove toxic foods, high sugar, refined carbs, processed foods, and excess caffeine. Caffeine overstimulates the crap out of your adrenal glands, which you do not want, okay? Uh, you really don't want that, okay, all right? Um, what we want to do is actually load up on fresh, natural foods and make sure you're getting at least three hits of protein a day. Most people, or a lot of people, when they, you know, if I look at the food diary, if you were, maybe if you were to tell me what you're eating a day, your biggest or maybe your only hit of actual protein is going to be with your evening meal. Okay, so it's important to make sure we're getting at least about, yeah three hits of that per day. So breakfast, lunch, dinner. All right. Uh, we need to improve your sleep as well. If you're not getting enough sleep, again, those cortisol levels are going to be sky high. Okay. Um, you know, you want to be getting about eight hours a night, ideally. You know, it's not always possible. You know, last night I had, I think, I had about four um, due to my head racing and my little boy waking up chatting shite. Um, but you know, it's not always possible. The closer you can get to having a good night's sleep, the better. Okay. Shorter workouts. Okay. So we're talking about 45 minutes in terms of training is absolutely ample. Okay. You don't want to go bonkers on that. Um, if you're someone who's highly stressed, um, it might be that fitting a workout into your life a couple of times a week is going to be an added stress. Okay. So it's a good idea to take stress away before you add it again. I'll go over this in more detail when we when we do an actual webinar on, on kind of stress and all that sort of stuff. But <clears throat> bottom line, if you're if you're you know if you're if you're maxed out on stress. Don't add something else. It's going to be another stressor until you can take something else away. Okay, um, but if you can train, then obviously train. Um, yeah, about three or four lots of 45 minutes is going to be the winner. All right, in terms of nutrition, um, vitamin C is, is massive. Okay, you get that from green veggies, oranges, and kiwi. Your B complex vitamins, uh, magnesium. Most people are deficient in magnesium, to be honest. Um, so it's something that the majority of my clients will be taking. Um, this is massive for energy metabolism, um, coenzyme for nerve and muscle function. We want about four or five hundred milligrams of magnesium a day. Most people, I'll get that. I'll get to take that sort of like an hour, hour and a half before bed, um, which is going to as, as as well as doing all the stuff. It's once you 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 kind of 
want it to do. It's actually going to help you kind of relax and sleep a bit better as well. A lot of people are poor. Um, calcium's a uh, pretty big one as well. That should actually be 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. Uh, low calcium levels actually lead to elevated cortisol production in your fat cells as well, which sucks. Tulsi tea is uh, just a herbal tea. Just Google it. I, uh, there's a bunch of different brands, um, but it's actually an, an ad adaptogen, and that can actually help to reduce your cortisol levels. Uh, what to say with that one is to drink it after about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Afternoon, rather than like kind of starting your day with it, so, um, cortisol is actually the you know it's the hormone that will actually kind of get you up in the morning if you if it's in its right level. Um, it's the thing that gets you ready for activity. Okay, you don't you know you, you don't want to be falling asleep at your desk, so I'd probably drink that stuff again. Like afternoon time is the best time for that. Okay, all right, love handles. Let's move on to the love handles. Oh, by the way, guys, literally as soon as we finish this this um, this webinar, you should be able to get it on YouTube as well, okay? So you guys who are here, you'll all get the link for it. So if you need to go back to anything, then you'll be able to just kind of skip back as well. <coughs> what I'll do once we've done this section as well, I'll just have a little look and see if you guys have popped any questions up as well. If you have got questions, just chuck them in the chat box and, and uh, I'll answer them, you know, sort of 10 minutes or so. So look, why do we store fat around the love handles? All right, cool. Basically, carbs, insulin, love handles, hand in hand. All right. Um, you, uh, yeah. It, it, in terms of love handle fat, it does generally all come down to too much carbs, or certainly too much of the wrong ones at the wrong times. Okay. Um, basically, you've got a hormone called insulin, which is what controls your blood sugar. Okay. When you BS, that's blood sugar, not bullshit. <laughs> when, you, when your blood sugar rises, um, which is usually going to come from hitting the grains or refined carbs, um, or you know just naughty sweet stuff basically, yeah, um, your blood sugar levels, yeah, I said your blood sugar levels have risen, your body's going to, your pancreas in particular there, it's going to send insulin out, okay? Insulin then is going to help to reduce those blood sugar levels, okay? Um, if you've got high levels of, of, of blood sugar, I said the insulin gets released. If you've got low levels of um, blood sugar, it's actually going to suppress the insulin, which is what you want. You want you want your blood sugar levels to stay as stable as possible throughout the day. They're going to rise and fall a little bit for sure, but you want those to stay as stable as possible, which basically means not eating a twat load of starchy carbs or sugary stuff. All right. Um, basically, if you if you've got kind of lower blood sugar levels, it's going to allow your body to actually start tapping into those fat stores. Insulin, you know, too much insulin in your body actually prevents your body from burning that fat. Okay, you don't want that obviously if you want to get lean, in particular around the love handles, which is where they're actually really super super um, receptive to to, to 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 fat storage as a result of too much sugar and carbs. Okay, um, exercise actually helps your cells, your body your body cells to become more sensitive to insulin and more efficient at using glucose for fuel okay um, when we're talking about insulin sensitivity we basically mean that you, you, your body needs to send out less for it to do its job okay because you, you, your body is more reactive to it more responsive to it okay so it doesn't need to send just so much out there um, now if you haven't if you've got too much insulin so for instance if you've just eaten like a, a Mars bar or something um, your body and your blood sugar levels have risen your body is going to send out all this insulin um, and what generally happens there is you you'll actually get a bit of a crash where it actually sends out too much which means your blood sugar levels will actually end up dropping okay when your blood sugar levels drop that's when you start um, craving you know you start getting hungry uh, and wanting the naughty stuff no one ever craves broccoli it's always something naughty you know the starchy uh, or sugary or salty carbs okay um, so again really super important to try and keep those blood sugar levels as stable as possible we're going to talk to you about how to do that in a minute um, basically, if you're eating a boatload of carbs, okay, but your muscle glycogen, that's a stored carbohydrate within the muscle, if that's already full, okay, there's no room for more glucose to go in there to get stored as glycogen, okay. Um, so basically, insulin is going to un unlock your fat cells and say, "Welcome in, come on in," okay. So again, if your carbohydrate stores are full and you eat a bunch more carbs your body's actually going to end up storing a bunch of that in your fat cells, okay, which obviously isn't what you want if you want to get lean. Okay. So when it comes to love and family, we spoke a bit about it, but but what do you what you gotta do about it? Um, 
basically this is it um, you want to go on a lower carb diet not zero carb okay um, if you go zero carb for longer than about sort of four or five days you start having a bit of a detrimental effect on your body you can actually start becoming insulin resistant if it's prolonged um, which is one of the, the the problems with like the Atkins diet for instance um, but yes yeah, so you want to go lower carb or and, and actually focus on carbohydrate timing as well I'm not talking about that in this seminar uh, but it's important to know when to get your carbohydrates down there okay as a basic rule of thumb eat the majority of your starchy carbs immediately post workout okay or in the meal that follows your training okay um, and you want to try and get that down about in about 30 to 60 minutes post workout as well generally okay Re resistance training is going to be the key as you'll find for everything fat loss or most things fat loss resistance training is the winner so looking at strength training body weight training that sort of stuff carb cycling actually manipulating your into intake of carbohydrates we actually do a three to one ratio generally where we go three low carb days and then one higher carb day we're actually, actually a great plateau buster which can help your body help shock your body kind of into um, actually giving up and burning more fat Intermittent fasting is is another one as well, which is which is a pretty good one. That doesn't mean it doesn't have to mean sorry, <coughs> doesn't have to mean you know not eating for like a day or two. Um, you know, most of the time, a lot of people get on well with like a 16 to 8 protocol or a, or a 14 to 10, where they basically don't eat for 16 hours or 14 hours, but then they do have like an 8 to 10 hour window where they get all their meals in. So for instance, you might eat between like 10 and 6, um, and that that be absolutely fine. Um, and that be working on that protocol. Okay, um, healthy fats you want to get down omega three in particular. That's actually going to increase your insulin sensitivity. So your fish oil is actually a big one for that one as well. For the veggies among you, you can use uh, one called Udo's oil. U D O apostrophe S. Yeah, Udo Udo's oil. So get an omega three. I wouldn't get an omega three six and nine or a three and a six. Literally just hit up the three. Um, you also want to get protein and fiber down every meal. That's actually going to slow the rate at which the any carbohydrates actually get into the system as well, which is super important. So that's going to help to give you a slower blood sugar uh, response as well. Okay. <laughs> cool. What I'm going to do quickly is just uh, get off this screen and just check if anyone's piped up any questions because it's possible that you might have done. Uh, let me have a look. Chat. Oh Lord, there's loads. <laughs> All right, cool. Best way to get calcium. Mentioned low volumes can affect cortisol. Is milk controversial topic? Topic as because when you get older, the enzymes break it down, become efficient. Thanks, Jess. Cool. Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm not a massive fan of of, uh, of, of cow's milk or any dairy in general, Jet. Like, 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 really, to be honest. Um, if you were to uh, just Google um, like vegetarian or vegan calcium sources you should be able to find um, a like kind of ba basically a, a cut of post which will show you like equivalents so it'll show you like it might be like a, you know, a, a cup of broccoli might be the same as like half a pint of milk or something like that um, so that's the best thing to do because there's, there's a whole bunch of foods that have got it from from various types of fish to um, you, you know your green leafy veggies are pretty big for it as well, and your cruciferous veggies are kind of loaded with it as well. So I just have a, just as I said, have a Google. Just type in there uh, vegan or vegetarian calcium sources, and you should be able to find a bunch of stuff on there. I uh, read. Uh, what else we got in there? Oh, that was the only one. Brilliant. Okay, cool. So we'll just get right back on it. <clears throat> Where am I going? Oh lord, slideshow. Smashing, so we've got to go right through this again. Again, you know, if you've got questions, guys, just bang them up in that chat box, and then we can uh, we can get those answered for you as we go through, or every kind of ten minutes or so. I look to stop. <coughs> okay, cool. So we've had a look at that. Right, cravings. This is a big one, really, really big one. There's a couple of things in there that you'll know about, spare, and there's a couple of things in there that you won't know about. So it should all be useful because um, it reminds you of the stuff that you do know, and it will tell you the stuff that you don't know. Whoop whoop. All right, cool. So. Basically, why do you need to beat cravings? Uh, the top of the list is to get leaner, get hotter, get stronger, faster. Okay. Um, if you're constantly failing on your nutrition or you know, just just bulging it up, basically, then you're, you're not going to get where you want to be. Certainly nowhere quick. Okay. So we want to get these cravings right in the butt. Um, it's actually going to enhance your brain function as well, believe it or not. 
Um, if you're constantly succumbing to these cravings, then that's not going to have a good effect on your, you know, you know from, from like a hormonal point and also um, in terms of your brain. Um, we're going to reduce inflammation within the body, uh, actually enhance your overall health and well-being, reduce that nutritional stress, which we kind of to talked about briefly already, um, and also because cravings suck and things that suck hold you back. <laughs> so we want to we want to we want to minimise the things that suck. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So, why we crave carbs? Oh, I've actually broken this down into. Uh, well, it actually says Ethan, which I kind of realised after I'd written it, which is interesting. So, um, yeah, hello, Ethan. I've broken it down into five five reasons. I've put emotional. Okay, so you might get emotional cravings. That might be emotional eating. So, for instance, um, I'm upset, so I'm craving ice cream. Okay, or I'm. Uh, Angry, so I need to eat a pizza, or I'm, I don't know, horny, so I need some sugary whipped cream, or whatever. I don't know. Okay, so you've got the emotional kind of cravings. I put territorial down there as well. Um, you know, because you know, you might get if you're someone who's you know been going to work at the same place in the same job for like you know ten years, and every lunchtime you'll have a sandwich. Chances are at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, whenever your lunchtime is, every every day, Monday to Friday, you're going to be craving that sandwich cake because that's what you're having every day. So that's what I mean on the territorial. Um, habitual as well, that might be you know, literally what I do when I go to my mum and dad's house, like, which I always try and stop myself now um, with reasonable effect. is like as soon as the first thing I do, as soon as I get to my mum and dad's house, into the kitchen, into the fridge, see what's in there. It's, it's not because I'm hungry, it's just habitual. We all do it. We've all got things like that. Um, so habitual eating. I put actual cravings as well. So when we're actually craving food, okay. So you know, just because a, a result of what we've eaten, or maybe we, um, if we look at the next one, ne ne necessary, um, we're actually looking at cravings that are actually kind of warranted, okay. So when your blood sugar levels are actually low because maybe you've been training, um, or when you've maybe not eaten for a little while, you're actually craving food and getting hungry because you need to eat, okay. Um, and that's what we're kind of breaking them down into. There. So, you, know, you know, nine times out of ten, we're craving carbs not because we need them, but because one of the other uh, other kind of four reasons there as well. Okay, so just kind of be a bit aware of that, and hopefully these eight things will help you out. All right, so look, eight ways to be them. I like that picture because I like donuts. <laughs> <coughs> All right, number one, neck a pint of water or a green string. All right, so if you're craving some carbs, or you know, even just if you think you might be getting hungry potentially, just neck a pint of water or, or, or a green string. If you use a green string, then then you're onto a winner there because they're great for your health in general. Um, a lot of time we're not actually hungry, we're thirsty. Um, so try that out before you actually nail this, nail, nail, get stuck into that sani. Um, a lot of the time, also, your body's not actually craving food. Or carbohydrate is actually craving nutrients. Okay, so many people don't get enough nutrients in, so they don't get, like quality nutrients. So they don't get enough fruits and veggies in. They don't get enough decent quality meat and fish and eggs and stuff like that. So your body's actually devoid of nutrients. It actually wants them. So a lot of times, actually craving that as opposed to a carbohydrate. Right. Um, so one of the things I do there is, is smash back a green string, which is great for alkalizing and oxygenating your blood as well, which is good for like energy production and just keeping you in tip-top condition. Um, but also at the same time, you're going to be loading your body with a massive hit of quality nutrients, okay? Um, which which it wants, which is going to help you out big time, okay? So it's always worth doing that, okay? Having your water or your greens before you go and reach for that sandwich or the cookies or whatever, because it might well be that it disappears. If the hunger doesn't disappear or the craving doesn't disappear, then maybe you actually do need to go and, and, and eat something, but something quality. Remember? All right, the next one. Start your day right. This is the biggest one. If you start your day with a crap breakfast or a crap meal, you're going to be losing the whole day, nine times out of ten, okay? If you start with sugar, you're going to crave more sugar throughout the day. A normal or typical breakfast for like most people and what people consider to be normal is a sugar fest, basically. You've got sugar in your milk in the form of lactose, you've got sugar in the, the, in the in your cereal, you've got sugar in your bread or like certainly a, um, like a fast-acting carb there. Yes, even if you've got like wholemeal bread, it's still going to be you know, pretty, pretty uh, crap effect on your insulin levels. And you've got, you know, if you're having a bit of jam on there, then then you've got that in there as well. Okay, so you're basically going to hit your body with a, a big load of 
high, fast-acting carbohydrates first thing in the morning, which, as we've had a look at, is going to cause your blood sugar levels to rise. Then your insulin is going to sent, get sent out by the truckload, which means your blood sugar level is going to fall again, which means you're going to start craving more and more shite, which means the cycle is going to continue, which means they're going to spend the rest of the day making the wrong calls with regard to your nutrition. Okay, So all you need to get your head around when it comes to starting your day right and just write this shit down is hit some protein, get some vegetables down, and get some water down first thing in the morning. Okay, if you get that right, like five days out of seven, then you're gonna have a massive, massive effect on your you know your efforts. Okay, um, that's it. Okay. Um, oh, back on that one. Don't be thinking eating vegetables or meat or eggs and stuff in the morning is weird. It's not. That's all I'm going to say on that one. <laughs> all right, cool. So beat your stresses into submission. All right, we spoke about stress already. Okay, high stress level is going to lead to carb cravings, which isn't what we want. We spoke about stress a bit, as I said. Um, so you've got to do what you can to eliminate as much stress from your life as possible. You know, you're not going to get every stressor out of your life. Um, it's impossible unless you're going to be, you know, you know, living on a beach in the Bahamas somewhere um, where the sun won't burn you and you, I don't know, you've got, got some massage in your day. You know, you're not going to live a completely stress-free life. But what I like to think, and I try to kind of do this as much as possible, is just think to myself, how can I make my life as easy and pleasant as possible? And just think about that, you know, write things down. It might be that you've got to stop doing stuff, you know, stop getting angry in traffic. It might be that you need to, um, you know, spend 10 minutes preparing your food the night before so you so you don't stress out in the morning uh, when it comes to having your breakfast or something. Just whatever's going to make your life as easy and pleasant as possible, do it. If you did, like, you know, if you pick, like, three things a week which are going to, and, and did it as part of your lifestyle, and you did, did, did those things that, just going to make your life better, and you put a new, a different three things every week. You, you know, your life certainly, you know, it's going to improve pretty quickly. Okay? And you're going to find that that stress is actually going to start to start to drop down. Um, and just, just get on it, basically. <coughs> All right, increasing your insulin sensitivity. So we said about that. Um, the more sensitive your body is to insulin, the less of it it needs to be less less of it needs to get sent out to. Um, Drop those blood sugar levels, okay? Uh, so it's super, super important to be sensitive to insulin as opposed to resistant to insulin because you're resistant to, if you're resistant to insulin, then your body's going to have to send out a twat load of the stuff, which, as you know, is going to stop you from burning fat, in particular around those love handles. Okay, cool. So um, we spoke about that already. So things like cinnamon, uh, omega-3, so fish oils in particular, magnesium and exercise. They're like the big four for me in terms of increasing your insulin sensitivity. So, you know, if you wanted to have like a... You know, if, if you're making some sort of dessert, then slam some cinnamon in there, and that's not going to be the worst thing in the world, okay? Um, if you want to make like a banana omelette or something like that, chuck some cinnamon in there. Again, that's going to help with that insulin sensitivity. In terms of fish oil, you want to get that down. Like, you know, I'd probably take between about three and 5,000 milligrams a day, kind of split between two or three meals. All right. Um, a good quality fish oil, not the crap one that you get in, like, um, your local supermarket or, or um, you know, the low-end low stuff you might get in a pharmacy. Uh, magnesium is massive for it as well, to be honest. Uh, a lower-carb diet as well, okay? So, you know, what I said earlier on as well holds true. So don't go more than about five, maybe six days low-carb because um, that can actually start get causing you to get insulin resistant, which, as I said, isn't what we want. All right, spice up your food. This is a big one for me, to be honest, because so many people just get bored with their nutrition, man. Um, if your diet's boring, you're not going to stick it. Okay, it's simple, simple, simple. If you're trying to live on chicken and broccoli, which pretty much every personal trainer will claim they eat all day long, every freaking day, which is absolute bullshit, then you're going to get bored and you're going to fall off the wagon, so to speak, um, and life's going to be miserable and it's not going to happen for you. Okay, so spice up your foods, make your meals as interesting as possible. You know, I've got cookbooks where you can you know, make ridiculously tasty curries and chilies and all those sorts of things, Mediterranean chickens and whatever. You know, you can eat clean food and eat well. Um, be massively happy with nutrition, with you know, with without feeling like you're on a diet or any of that stuff. So you know, think outside the box with your, with your cooking, um, and, and just make it interesting. All right, and that's it. <coughs> all right, next one's pretty important. You probably haven't thought about this one because uh, most people don't. But enhance your gut health. Okay, if you've got a poorly functioning gut, that's going to lead to inflammation within your body. Okay, um, which is going to actually mean that you'll become resistant and resistant to insulin's 
I'm satisfied message. Okay, that's one of the things it does there. Um, so we need to get that gut on, on you know, kind of firing all cylinders. If you've got nutritional deficiencies such as like in B vitamins, magnesium, which we spoke about already, and chromium, um, where the food's actually not properly digested, that can actually lead to carb cravings as well. Okay, if your body's not able to, you know, if your gut if your guts aren't able to properly absorb food into the bloodstream, that's when these nutritional deficiencies are going to come in. Even if you're consuming a bunch of these these um, kind of vitamins and minerals, if your body's not absorbing them, then they're, they're no use to you. Okay. Um, also, having a, a, a gut that's not functioning right can actually cause low moods, which often leads to you wanting some high carb foods to get that boost or that kick, all right, um, so I see this little, uh, little, extra little one on there, um, and in terms of what we can do there is boot out the intolerable foods, so, you know, most most foods such as, sorry, not most foods, but the, the most intolerant, tolerated, untolerated foods uh, in the human diet would typically be dairy um, and wheat as well, or wheat and gluten, okay, so they're definitely two to kind of start off by getting rid of to kick off with, okay, there's an absolute minimum. I'd also use a quality probiotic as well, I'm not talking about yak out there, um, I get a probiotic off alimentnutrition.com.co.uk, alimentnutrition.co.uk, I think, they got a probiotic capsule in there, which is pretty good, All right, glutamine, this actually links to the gut as well, <coughs> basically glutamine is a supplement which you can take, uh, I just had another pouch arrived today, actually, basically if you take about three or five grams um, of that with meals, that can actually help to quash your carb cravings that are, um, excuse me, that are associated with low mood or sugar addiction. Okay, so if you're someone who's always smashing back the starchy carbs or the sugars, then hitting some glutamine kind of two or three times a day with your meals is going to be a big one to help you out as well. And um, this actually helps with your gut as well, believe it or not. Um, it's also one, an energy source for your brain and can actually help to beat out that emotional and cons compulsive eating patterns as well. So glutamine is a good one to look at. Um, myprotein.com, if you go on there and just type in glutamine and just buy like L-glutamine, it's like 10 quid or something, um, that would be what I would recommend. Don't get a flavoured one either, because I don't know what's in that, but the other one's fine. <coughs> All right, and oops, excuse me. Oh, no, we're going to lose it. No, there we go. The last one, eliminate processed foods and refined carbs. Okay, this is pretty obvious. Um, you know, we've spoke about it already. If your if your blood sugar levels are going up and down all day, then you're going to be craving more food. So we need to stop eating that stuff to start off with. You probably crave it a bit for the first couple of days, but once you kind of got over that um, and the nutrition's getting back on track, you should find that they'll kind of gradually start to disappear anyway. Okay, so I'd steer clear of the sweet stuff. One thing that do kind of recommend every now and again for someone like you know you might be working with for a couple of weeks like if they're still getting like the odd craving is um, occasionally I might get someone to have like a couple of cubes of like like uh, like an organic dark chocolate like in excess of seventy percent cocoa I uh, usually I'd go for like the green and black so like eighty or eighty five percent one um, and that can actually kind of help out so I literally just a couple of cubes and that that can often help out with cravings. Uh, coconut oil as well is actually another big one. Um, you can have a, if you have like a teaspoon or a dessert spoon for the coconut oil, um, then that can help. Uh, one thing I do with that is actually mix like a dessert spoon of coconut oil with some like a teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, that's an absolute winning strategy there. Cool. So you got a ninth one in there as well. All right. Uh, just double check if we've got any questions, and then we'll get on and start talking about fatty fat fat. <coughs> All right. Cool. Let's have a butcher. So, uh, I missed the first 20 minutes. Can I rewind and watch it? Yeah, Melanie, um, it will be it will be on YouTube literally as soon as I end the call, so you'll be able to go back and watch it on there as many times as you want. Okay. Uh, do you eat breakfast before or after you work out? Depends what time you're working out. Um, if you know, ideal situation. If you're training at seven o'clock, then finishing at eight o'clock, get your meal down, you know, get your breakfast down by about half past eight. Um, that'd be the winner there. Um, so I do that after working out. You know, your body is, you know, your muscles, glycogen stores are, you know, as long as your diet's all right and you've actually been eating some carbohydrate in there, your, you know, those stores are actually going to be full up. So you've got gas in the tank basically. So you've got enough energy to get through your workout, no problem. Um, so I, I kind of do that in a fasted state, so we're not eating anything, and I get your breakfast down after training. I'll actually, I've, I've got another webinar on pre and post workout nutrition, which I'll probably email out at some time. But um, yeah, so don't don't worry too much, but I'd train and then eat after that. 
Can you eat fruit for breakfast? Yeah, you can. Eat, I mean, you can have some fruit for breakfast. Don't go bonkers on it though, because it's um, you know, it's, it's still sugar. If, for instance, you were doing a typical, what a lot of, uh, I say, I say women actually, because um, I've never met a man to eat this really. But a lot of women, every now and again, or maybe even daily, might have as like a healthy um, um, idea for breakfast. Might be like granola with some like yogurt and like some fruit which is just sugar on top of sugar on top of sugar. Um, so don't go bonks on something like that. If you were to have, um, you know, like a handful of blueberries or something, or like a banana omelette, then, you know, that's all cool. Uh, if you were to nail like a punnet of strawberries and a load of grapes, a couple of oranges and a kiwi fruit and a pineapple, then it's, uh, it's not quite so good. Because, you, you know, your body's still going to treat it as sugar and it still will have an impact on your insulin levels as well. Uh, when's the best time to take probiotic? I take it with with meals. Um, I take it probably twice a day. Generally, yeah, I think I'll have it. I'm not taking it in a minute, but generally I have like one one capsule like twice a day um, with with a meal. All right, various other supplements, supplementary things like glutamine, probiotic, etc. Necessary. Then you know what I say with supplements is it's important to put your shirt on before you tie. Um, but yeah, no, definitely these 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 things will, will be a big help for sure. Um, in particular, if someone who str struggles with like digestion or has like you know uh, with digestive problems, then certainly like glutamine and probiotic can help in a big big way. You know what you got to think, guys, that the more the more you can um, reduce the new st nutritional stress on your body, the better that's going to be for you. And if you can take like a scoop of glutamine, which is going to help you out there, or some probiotic, which is going to help you out there, then then, then get right on it. Um, there's certainly no drawbacks to, to it as, as well. Okay, All right, I think that's it for questions. So let's get on it. All right, I'm gonna have to go back to the start again, aren't I? Damn it! <laughs> so it's my uh, techno tile. There's probably an easy way to do that. I said, any more questions, guys? Just, just bang them in there. All right, where we going? So we're getting on to fat next. Um, before we start this, just kind of think to yourself, like, whether you have ever thought I shouldn't eat fat because it would make me fat. Um, I guarantee everyone on the line has, um, because I, you know, I've even thought it when I was a, a younger lad for sure as well. Um, but I want to talk to you about why fat is actually a fat loss friend and not your foe, okay? Because fat is not the devil when it comes to, to getting in shape, all right? So what's the fear when it comes to fat? Basically, it's a boatload of media hype which stemmed from, I think, about 1970, uh, in particular when like some studies were done on saturated fat, which has since been quashed. Um, and basically, you know, there's always a load of media hype, or certainly up until recently, I guess, uh, media hype, telling you how fat is bad for you and fat's going to make you fat and saturated fat is the devil and all that sort of stuff, okay, which is not, uh, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, so there's less today than, than, than in recent years, okay, um, so now there's more studies coming out and more journal articles coming out and more, more coverage in the paper saying that actually what we said about this years ago is bullshit, um, so please do eat some saturated fat, blah, 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 blah. Um, but some people do still believe it, okay, do still think I need to go low fat in order to lose weight, I need to go low fat to, to get the body I want, okay. So people often still get drawn into low fat or 0% fat products, and that's due to marketing, okay. Um, you know, a lot of those products, and even like the ready meals and stuff, they're made to look healthy, you know, you, you know it as well, you know, you... Um, <coughs> if you're in a supermarket and you picked up a, uh, I don't know, like a, if you picked up like a, a tub of Philadelphia, like a, a, a full fat Philadelphia, and then next to it you picked up like a, I don't know what they do, like a 0% fat or a, a half fat Philadelphia, you instantly look at it, and before you even, even read it, you'll think, wow, that one looks healthier, just because of how it's packaged, how it's packaged and how it's displayed to you, okay, um, so it's all down to marketing, all right? Example I've got for you here, okay, is how fat is not the devil. It's Jaffa cakes. Man, I love those things. I've actually given up chocolate for a year, which is I'm glad about because I could happily. I think my record. I think I ate like three packs of Jaffa cakes once back to back, which is <coughs> I think that's like 36 Jaffa cakes. That's a useless bit of information for you, which now makes you think I'm a fat bastard. Um, but yeah, so basically Jaffa cakes. They got one gram of fat per cake. They see they say it in a freaking advert. It says it on the box. Only one gram of fat per cake. That's fantastic. But of that 12 gram cake, 8.4 grams of it is carbohydrate, of which 6.5 grams is sugar, um, of which a 12 gram cake, that means you've got over 50% sugar. 
Let me just do a calculation. This is this is going to horrify me. Six point five times <coughs> thirty six. Shit. So if, <laughs> and when I when I nailed three packs of Jaffa cakes at one stage in my life, I think it might have been like a, a week after an Iron Man or something. Um, I hope. I ate two hundred thirty four grams of sugar. Okay, <laughs> in like pretty much in about half an hour. So it's not the fat. It's not the fat, it's the sugar. All right, another example here is a can of Coke. There's no fat in Coke. Uh, there's 39 grams of sugar. That's about nine teaspoons of sugar. That's a shitload of sugar. Um, it's not fat that makes people fat, okay? You know, we're living in a world right now where there are more low-fat products than ever, and people are tr still trying to consume less fat, but the world is getting fatter every single year. That tells you that shit's backwards, okay? People are getting things backwards, okay? People need to eat higher fat, Quality fat, which we're going to talk about in a minute, okay, and less of the sugar, which we spoke about as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so look, fat's not the reason we're fat. Sugar, processed foods, a toxic freaking diet as well is massive, because um, your liver can't cope with it. Okay, you, you, you know, your body can't cope with with uh, too much toxins. Okay, same as it it doesn't want to cope or shouldn't have to try and cope with too much alcohol as well. You know. All right, and a lack of training as well. Here's just a little dot, little illustration of how much sugar is in one of these cans of Coke, which I'm not going to count them, but it looks like quite a lot. I mean, if you would put all those cubes in that can, I mean, you couldn't fit them through the top anyway to start off, but you cut it open. But you know, that's going to take up a that's going to take up a good amount of that can. So don't drink Coke; you make you fat. All right, let's have a little look at fats because you probably well, you might well know a bit about it, you might not do, but we're just going to break break down like sort of I think four um, different types of fats. So you've got mono and saturated fat. Okay, these actually raise good cholesterol, HDL cholesterol. They lower the bad cholesterol, which is LDL. Not all cholesterol is bad. Okay, um, you actually want your HDL cholesterol to be high, uh, and you want your lower you, you want your LDL cholesterol to be lower. Okay, um, people talking about eggs and that raising your cholesterol level. That's all a load of bullshit as well. So just ignore that. Um, basically, these fats actually protect protect against a buildup of plaque in your arteries. They help to prevent belly fat as well. You're going to get these fats in olive oil, almonds, cashews, avocado, sesame seeds, <coughs> and I'd actually recommend about two or three tablespoons a day. All right, if you were talking like olive oil, for instance, um, olive oil or any liquid oil, I wouldn't cook with, okay, because it's not very stable when you actually heat it. So I'd, uh, but you know, for like a purpose of a dressing, then <coughs> certainly slamming on a good tablespoon or so of olive oil with some dressing on your salad is, is bang on the money. Okay. Similarly, you know, a handful of almonds is is, is great. Um, smashing back some avocados, bang on the money as well. Um, sesame seeds, as I said, yeah. If you're if you're getting a couple of hits of those foods a day, then you're not going to be too far off your monounsaturated fat intake being pretty good. Polyunsaturated fat. These are ones you hear about quite a lot. Your omega fats. Okay, so omega three and six. <coughs> These ones actually help to lower that um, that bad cholesterol. Okay, omega three is a big one. Okay, this is the one I want you eating a lot of. Okay, and that's actually boosts your brain function, strengthens your immune system, helps with insulin sensitivity, which we spoke about already. Enhances your mood, um, gives you healthy eyes, skin, and brain. Uh, you're talking about sources like oily fish. We're looking at salmon, mackerel, herring, canola oil, flaxseed oil, walnuts are a winner as well. Um, walnuts are a great kind of nut because they're actually kind of loaded right up with antioxidants because you generally eat those in that kind of in in they still got the skin on basically so they're really packed tight with antioxidants. Um, in terms of like getting some polyunsaturated fats down your body down your neck, um, you want to have more omega three than six. Okay, you want pretty much about a two to one ratio. Of that now I'm not going to tell you to measure it. Just make sure. Um, you're eating a, a decent amount of the omega-3. So, you know, if you don't like oily fish or your veggie, then, um, you know, as I said, hit like a, a supplement, whether it's a fish oil one or whether it's like an Udo's oil one. As I said, that's a pretty good one. You know, flaxseed oil is a good one as well if you're veggie. I'd take about three to 5,000 5, milligrams a day of omega-3, okay? Um, don't bother supplementing with omega-6 because chances are you're getting enough of that in your diet already. <laughs> All right, saturated fat. These saturated fats, these have been demonized by the health and nutrition industry, but you do need them in your diet. There's a whole bunch of reasons these are good, okay? Um, now, most of them will come from animal sources, so like, you know, you like animal fat, but, um, you know, my, my actual, you know, my, my big favorite source of fat, saturated fat is coconut oil, okay? <coughs> There's a bunch of reasons for that, which we'll talk about in a second or at some point. <laughs> uh, coconut oil is basically rich in these... Um, Excuse me. Uh, there we go. Time. Uh, rich in medium chain fatty acids. Okay. 
Um, these are like little nutritional powerhouses which are easily digested and utilized by your cells and actually stimulate metabolism. So coconut oil, as a saturated fat, can actually stimulate your metabolism. Okay, now trans fats. This is the devil's fat. This is man-made. It's made by chemically altering unsaturated fat to prolong the shelf life of foods. Okay, um, and this actually raises the bad cholesterol, lowers the uh, the good cholesterol. Anything that's got a trans fat in it or hydrogenated fat, stay the hell away from it. Okay, um, you're looking at foods like processed foods, crackers, cookies, pastries, donuts. <clears throat> um, if you eat like chips from the chippy, then then that's going to be pretty much the worst type of oil you can ever have because it just gets heated and cooled and heated and cooled and heated and cooled and just ends. You know, if you could pick a drink to like kill someone with, then I'd probably choose that. Okay, all right. So quality fat sources. All right, cold water fish. So and th these are all foods that I want you including more of in your diet. So I can guarantee you're not eating enough of these foods. Okay, you're not getting enough quality fat in your diet. Guarantee. Okay, cold water fish, the so salmon, some white fish, mackerel, sardines, anchovies. These bad boys are said high in omega-3. It's going to help the insulin sensitivity. It's going to help the decrease inflammation within your body as well. Okay, so the majority of your fat, I'd actually look to get that from these omega-3 sources. Okay, um, there's been a study that I read a while ago that showed that by taking four, cons yeah, consuming four grams of omega-3 for six weeks, actually significantly increased lean mass and reduced body fat um, in a group of uh, men compared to uh, a, a group of men who did the same program with without the omega-3 supplementation. So it's pretty powerful stuff, all right? So yeah, try and get a serving of that down with most meals. All right, other good sources, nuts, so walnuts, almonds, all good, high in antioxidants we said about, loaded up with protein and healthy fats as well. Avocado, again, rich in antioxidants, it's a good quality monounsaturated fat, loaded up with fiber and loads and loads of essential nutrients as well. So avocado is great. That doesn't mean you've got to eat one, you know, peel the skin off and just chuck it in your mouth. You know, you can make a guacamole if you want to do that. Um, you know, whatever, just get it down. You know, put some nuts in there as well, pine nuts, whatever. Uh, coconut oil, right, let's get on this one. I said this is my favorite type of saturated fat, right? Medium chain triglycerides, winner. These bad boys go straight to the liver from your digestive tract to be used as a quick source of fuel. This actually kind of acts like a carb. Often, if I've got someone who's doing like carb cycling, so when they're going low carb, I'll actually get them to, if they, you know, if someone struggles um, with their energy levels, I'll actually get them to eat and it's off the spoon, like a dessert spoonful or a tablespoon full of coconut oil, and that will help out big time. Or again, sometimes we'll slab some cinnamon in there as well. <clears throat> and that's what it looks like at room temperature as well. The good thing with coconut oil for cooking with as well is it's very, very stable when you heat it. Okay, if you if you heat it, well, it's, it's solid at room temperature. If you heat it, it will go liquid. If you cool it again, it will go back to being a solid. Okay, it's because the chemical composition doesn't really change there. Okay, if you heat it up, olive oil or most liquid oils would start liquid. If you then leave it to cool, it ends up a solid. Okay, just look at it in the pan the next day when you can't be asked to cook uh, to clean up after you made your bolognese. All right, so the chemical composition there has changed. Doesn't happen with coconut oil. All right, um, basically coconut oil again. These medium chain triglycerides can increase energy expenditure compared to other saturated fats. Pretty cool. Uh, again, another study I read showed that 15 to 30 grams of these a day can actually increase your daily energy expenditure by about 5%, which is pretty big. Um, they've got lauric acid in there, which actually helps kill off bacteria, viruses, and infections. Uh, I spoke about cravings and stuff, and actually enhance your brain function as well. Winner. All right, so look, bottom line, if you want to be fat, stupid, and miserable, avoid eating fats. If you want to be lean, wise, and hot, eat the right ones daily. Uh, you can write that down if you want. Um, I, uh, I think I was the first person ever to say that today. So, uh, yeah, write it down. <laughs> Good times. All right, cool. Let me just have a little look again. Uh, see if questions are going. I'll just check the time as well. Shoot. Uh, what I think we'll do, guys, because we've been all, almost an hour, we'll do this. What have we got on here? We'll do the macronutrients. All right. Then we'll just have a Q&A. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'll chuck the rest of the stuff in the in the next one. Okay. So we'll do the macronutrients. Then we'll do a Q&A. And then we'll chuck the rest of the stuff in the next one. Because I don't want to keep you for like ever. Because uh, chances are you've got stuff to do. All right. Let's have a little look at this. Uh, right, let's have a look. Can you have dried fruit and nuts? Yeah, you can. Like, I mean, you know, dried fruit's not a winner. Um, it's you know, it's, it's super high sugar, and a lot of them have got got like preservative put on it as well. Um, so I generally steer clear of dried fruit most of the time. Um, 
like if you wanted to have some, then I'd say after you've trained would be the best time when your body's actually going to use the sugars. Um, in terms of like nuts as well, you know you can eat nuts for sure, absolutely. Uh, but like you know, the big thing with like fruit and nuts, or just fruit or nuts, um, is not going overboard on it. You know, I I, I ban myself from buying it at all because if I bought like a three hundred gram bag, I know full well that I'd go through it in like a day. Um, so you've got to kind of like be you know. If if you're like a better person than me in terms of that, then then, then crack on. But yeah, again, I wouldn't go completely bonkers on it. All right, natural muesli a good is natural muesli a good breakfast? It, it's not it's not protein and and veggies, so I'm gonna say no um, to that. So I'm, I'm gonna say no. It's not it's not the greatest breakfast. You know, if you wanted to have something out like a couple of days a week, and like again after you've trained. <coughs> then, um, then, then you know, that, that's you know, that, I, I wouldn't have a massive problem with that if you're like a client of mine. Um, but like you know, you, you really want to be hitting some good quality proteins. So you're talking like uh, meat, fish, eggs, or like a, some sort of vegan sauce, um, and some decent quality veggies down first thing in the morning as well. That's 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 where you're going to get your, your your gains and your benefits from. Okay. Uh, are those naked bars okay? Same, same sort of thing. The fruit and nuts. Really. I mean, there's no crap in those. Um, but like, again, they're relatively sugary. Uh, but like, you know, it's they're not the end of the world as a little snack. But again, it's something that will have a bit of an effect on your blood sugar levels as well. So again, the easiest thing to do with that is if you want to have something like that, then get it down after you train or even before you go and train. And that'll probably be that will in fact be a bit better for you. Is it true aspartame is terrible for you? Yes. <laughs> That's, that's, that's as much uh, information I go into that one. Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons aspartame is a devil's freaking um, chemical. So like, if you if you just Googled aspartame um, negatives, you'll get like a billion things come out. If you Googled aspartame positives, I don't think you'll get anything. <clears throat> and what's the latest time to eat? The, what's the latest? Yeah, it depends. It depends on, on your nutritional program. Um, that, that you're following. For instance, for some people, when we're getting them doing like intermittent fasting, we might get them eating as late as like nine o'clock in the evening. Um, or for some people, we might say they want to stop eating. You know, they might want to have their last meal at about six. Uh, all depends on kind of the person and the and, and you know the nutritional program which we got them on. So it, you know, there's no right or wrong answer really. Um, you know, general kind of rule of thumb for a lot of people is is not to eat loads past sort of six or seven o'clock. But again, that you know, there's studies showing that actually eating later at night can actually be a benefit to your fat loss as well. So um, it all would depend on your nutritional program. Um, so I don't know who you are because it says unknown. But if you work with me, then you can speak to me about it. All right, cool. Let's move on. I think that's all of those things. Uh, macronutrients. Ah, Christ, we've got to go through this again. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so macronutrients. Right, we're talking about um, protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Okay, and I'm actually going to talk to you about how much of each one you want to have if you want to to lose weight. Basically, if you want to lose fat. All right. Um, and this, again, you know, of all this stuff, it's like it's not an exact science. Um, but what I'm going to be going through now is what will generally work for you know most people, sort of like nine nine people out of ten really. Okay, all right. So how much protein, carbohydrate, and, and fat your body needs is you know it comes a lot of it largely comes down to your somatotype, which is basically your basically how your body's structured. Okay, um, you've got an ectomorph, which is this skinny mini on the left. You got a mesomorph, which is this slightly more muscular, hot-looking thing in the middle, <laughs> and then you got an endomorph, which is like typically your, your, your curvier girl who carries more fat. <coughs> okay, an ectomorph. Okay, um, this might take you back to your school PE days. Okay, they're long, lean, find it hard to gain weight. All right, so um, you might hate these people. Uh, an en endomorph is is round, stockier, and gains fat easily. Okay, um, a mesomorph is someone who builds muscle easier, burns fat pretty well. They're more V-shaped and they're hated by everyone for those three, three or four reasons. Okay, um, we don't really hate you, by the way. <coughs> now, not everyone is um, that, that, or that. Okay, we can be in between. So you might be between an ectomorph and a mesomorph, or you might be between an endomorph and a mesomorph, or an endo and ecto, whatever. You know. Um, 
So you don't just have to fit in one category. But what I'm going to talk to you about is, you know, that, that, that's why I'm saying there's no exact science to it. But what we'll talk about is kind of like you know, the, the pretty much about the standard for for kind of um, macronutrient intake for for fat loss for different types of person. All right. So look, an ectomorph. These people use carbohydrate pretty well for energy, typically. Okay. Um, so if you if you're like naturally real like lean and skinny, then t your body will probably use carbohydrates pretty well. All right, so you get on well with a reasonable amount of carbs. Now, for these people, chances are you not actually want to lose weight so much. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, it might be that you just. I mean, well, it, the emphasis does, in fact, need to be on getting stronger and actually gaining some muscle um, and eating. Okay. Um, if you want to gain muscle and you're an ectomorph, then you you know you, you do need to make sure you're getting a decent amount of food down. Um, or you know if you're trying to get bring the abs out or something, then it's pretty simple. Okay, it's generally these guys will find it pretty easy to lose the weight. Okay, and they'll generally do that pretty much just by eating clean and not eating quite so much. Okay, um, and they should find just by doing that to get pretty good results. In terms of the breakdown of the macronutrients. These guys want to eat about 45% of their diets wants to be carbohydrate, about 35% wants to be protein, and about 25% of their diet wants to be fat. Okay, um, so in a day, you know, if you were to give a crude example, <coughs> excuse me, they might want to eat 50 grams of fat, um, 70 grams of protein, and 90. No, sorry, that wouldn't work out too well. I'll get, I'll, I'll, what I'll do, I'll give you some decent maths equations on these, like um, via email or something. But that's basically the basically the, pretty much the percentage there. Um, we'll have a look at the mesomorphs next. Now these guys are the ones that get lean and build muscle pretty well. Okay, um, for these guys, most things are going to work. Okay, if you you know these guys will naturally have like a, a high metabolism. They'll naturally burn calories at a, a you know rate of a thousand fires. Um, so most things are going to work for this person. You, know, you could you could get them doing sprints and they're going to get pretty lean. You could get them get them out running, they'll probably get quite lean. You could smash them in like some conditioning work, they'll get lean. You can hit them on a bodybuilding program, they're going to get lean. Okay, so they'll find this like a bit easier than, for instance, an ectomorph or an endomorph. <coughs> These guys um, will typically need to smash about 35% carbs, about 30% protein, and about 30% of their diet can be fat as well. Okay, so re again, re reasonably high fat. Um, a fair amount of protein here, and, and like a pretty even split down the carbohydrate side of things as well. Fuel timing for these guys is 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 the key to getting super super lean, right? So I said most things are going to work for these people, but if someone here is like at like say for a woman if they're like at maybe 18% body fat, but they want to drop down to like 13, but their diet's already good then they're really going to have to work on their fuel timing, so like the carbohydrate timing, the pre and post workout nutrition, and that's, the, that's going to be the game changers for these guys. All right? And then you've got the endomorph. The endomorphs are the majority of people that we train. Okay? Um, probably the majority of you guys on the line are, are going to kind of sit in this category or somewhere in between one of the others and this category. Okay? Um, for these guys, they need to basically go lower carb, um, which we can do via reducing carbohydrate intake. Um, carb cycling works pretty well for these guys as well, as long as it's like structured and, and well monitored and you know good protocol. Um, and intermittent fasting is, is another good one for these guys as well. Um, in terms of their nutrients, check this out. 45% fat. Okay, that's a good amount of fat. Like again, I can guarantee you're probably shitting yourself right now, thinking I can't eat that much fat in my diet. But you want to get about 45% of your calories from fat, about 40% um, of your diet needs to be protein, and only about 15% carbohydrate. So you do need your carbs, but you don't need to be getting most uh, 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 too much of them if you are fitting in this category. Okay, so you know, without even you know without even looking or without even thinking too heavily about these exact percentages. If you're one of these, if you sit in this kind of ca uh, category, remember this is like the, the curvier woman, um, you know, typically storing more fat. Then, then you need to be eating more fat than you're doing right now. Probably for most of you, you want to probably double it out of thought. Um, you likely need to eat more protein. Um, and for a lot of you, you probably need to cut down on those carbohydrates. The majority of your carbs as well want to be in your post-workout meal, okay? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, what, I'd probably, or, yeah, what I'd probably say is over your day, you'd want to have about 50% of that 15% 
in your post workout feed. Okay, that'll probably be the winner. So if you're if you're fifteen percent just so happened for argument's sake to be in a day you're gonna eat eighty grams of carbohydrate. Uh, no idea what the maths would be on that. Um, straight after training you'd want to get forty grams of that down and then the other forty would be split throughout the other two meals throughout the day. Okay. Um, in terms of feeding the meals here two to three bigger meals a day. Um, when we're hitting like the intermittent fasting, like the 16 to 8 or the the, the 14 to 10, um, some people do better taking two meals in, some people do, do, do better doing three, okay? Um, all depends on the, on, on the person. Um, but that can go, that, that'll go for just in normal normal kind of nutrition as well, to be honest, as well, or carb cycling. Um, so yeah, just two or three slightly bigger meals throughout the day. And again, bump that fat up, okay? So looking at those sources we've had a look at already. Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, we're going to call. I'm going to call time in terms of the actual presentation now, um, and we're just going to skip right through to ah, I've lost it again. We're just going to scoot right to like just some questions, um, because I said we've got a bit. There's probably about another half an hour there, and I don't want to keep you guys on the line. So what we're going to do, I'm going to chuck all this stuff into the next <coughs> the next webinar we do. So I'll just answer any questions we got on here right now. What else we got on there? Uh, oh, we've not got any more questions. We've got one that says Estelle. <laughs> okay, I don't think that's a question. Oh, oh, sorry, you are us. Oh, she's telling me she's Estelle. Nice to meet you, Estelle. Good stuff. All right, cool. So if you've got any more questions, guys, I'm just going to leave that box open for a bit. So just uh, just add in any questions that you've got. Um, as I said, I'm going to do the rest of this stuff, which is talking about training. I'm going to do that next week now, okay? Because I said we don't have an extra half an hour to get all this stuff done. And I'd rather do it well than, than and, and really help you out rather than just go straight through it. Um, now, the last little thing, guys, right? You should—I think you, I can't see your screen, but you should have on your right-hand side of your screen. You should have one of these. Uh, you should have this box, okay? This basically. Um, I'm doing a one-time thing. As I said, there's nothing to sell on, the, on this webinar or anything. Um, but I just want to help out five people, um, just literally because that's all I've got time to do, um, via like a coaching call, basically. Um, so if you want to get on the line with me and have me actually kind of personally kind of start to develop a bit of a strategy with you like individually to kind of help you get to where you want to be, then then you can do that. All you've got to do is hit the button there, and that will take you to a little form, like an application form, and basically the first five people that, that do that will will, um, will get a chance to get on the phone with me, I will just have a bit of a chat and, and, and just kind of help you out that way. Um, as I said, um, if you want to do that, then, then crack on. If not, no dramas, but it's there for you if you want it. Uh, but other than that, guys, I'll just have one last little check on the questions. We've got nothing else in there. So ho hopefully you guys have found that pretty interesting today. Um, as I said, as soon as we get off the line, this video should be live. Um, well. And I think you should get an email to you as well. If you don't get an email to you, then I'll email it out tomorrow so you can check it out then. But other than that, guys, thanks for listening. Appreciate your time. Hopefully that's been helpful. If it has, just pipe up over on my Facebook and let me know you enjoyed it. And I'll uh, or, or drop me an email, and I'll catch up with you guys soon. Take a stay. Bye-bye.